And let me start now with the two common psychiatric conditions, where actually the greater risk after COVID turns out to be very transient. So on the left uh, in each panel, in pink and in blue, is the overall Kaplan-Meier curves for the full two-year period. And at this magnification, you can only just see that in the short term, there is a greater risk of mood disorder and anxiety disorder. But those curves both come together and if anything, then cross over in the second half of this period. And that's reflected in blue on the right in the time varying hazard ratios, where in the top panel for mood disorder, for example, you can see that the, the hazard ratio, the time, the risk horizons, we called it, the time at which the risk after COVID is now equal to the risk after other respiratory infections, has returned to one within 43 days, so only five or six weeks after the diagnosis of COVID infection. And if one then follows that time uh, onwards, because the risk, the hazard ratio then goes, goes below one for mood disorder, by 457 days, you're no longer at greater risk of a mood disorder after COVID than you were after any other respiratory infection. So that perspective, I think, gives a very different view on the relationship between mood disorder and COVID than one one looks only at the shorter time periods. And a very similar story is seen for anxiety disorder. Again, the risks are transient and they are then sort of compensated for by a reduction in risk in the longer time periods after recovery from COVID compared to other infections. So that's, I think that's quite good news. And those findings certainly surprised us and they contrast with some of the other conditions where the risks appear to be continuing. And I'll show you three examples of that, psychotic disorder, dementia, and cognitive deficits, brain fog. And you can see for all three of these, the Kaplan-Meier curves remain separated throughout the two-year period. And on the right, the time-varying hazard ratios remain above one throughout this period. In other words, the greater risk of being diagnosed with these conditions remains present two years after COVID infection, as great, or certainly in most cases, as it did within a few weeks or months of COVID infection. So these risks are not going away. I emphasize this is not about course of the illness or continuation. These are about new diagnoses. So people are still being diagnosed with psychotic disorder, dementia, or cognitive deficit more commonly two years after COVID infection. We, of course, don't know when their symptoms began. These may well be delayed presentations or diagnostic presentations rather than delayed onset of symptoms. But at least this would suggest that as far as the health system is concerned, these new diagnoses are still coming forward uh, at these relatively prolonged time intervals.